Hi everyone, in this video I'll be doing Advent of Code 2021, Day 15. You'll see me doing the puzzles and then I'll explain them in detail. As usual, the code is in the GitHub repository, which is linked to in the description. More links to resources as well down there. And let's get started with the puzzles. Alright, so let's explain the puzzles. Today we are working with yet another two-dimensional map. We are trapped inside still the same cave because we haven't gotten out yet, but presumably we'll get out soon, hopefully. Um, but we are trapped inside a two-dimensional surface because the ceiling is very low. There is a grid displaying risk values for different sections of our cave. What we need to do is get from the top left point to the bottom right point uh, in the least amount of sum of risk values possible. So basically, we just need to navigate our way to find the lowest cost from the top left to the bottom right. In this example, the path is shown highlighted, and the total risk is 40. Uh, total lowest risk is 40 um, by taking this path and summing all the numbers along it, except for the first um, number because that's not counted. So, today's puzzles require a bit of algorithms, specifically, at least Dijkstra's. Um, and this is a somewhat complicated algorithm that you would learn in a data structures and algorithms class. So I don't think the average programmer would know this. If you do competitive programming, you would probably know this, um, or if you're a CS student. So today I'm actually going to explain the basics behind Dijkstra's. But first, we're going to look at why a brute force solution would not work. If we did something like breadth first, breadth first search or um, dynamic programming or something, that would not work because our input is 100 by 100. And to uh, compute all the paths in that, there are actually 200 choose 100 possible paths through the entire thing. And that is equal to roughly 10 to the 16, which is a, no, it's a, it's, it's a giant number. It's actually 10 to the 58. No, yeah, it's huge. So we can't possibly explore all possible paths in here. So dynamic programming won't work and Breadth first search will not work either. So we're going to need something a bit smarter. By the way, here's the Wikipedia page for Dijkstra's algorithm. I'll link it down in the description so you can take a more detailed look if you'd like. So first of all, hopefully you understand what breadth first search is. Um, it's just a way of looking through a grid and kind of finding the shortest path between two points. Um, short by shortest path in this case, we actually mean shortest sum of risk levels, which when you're working with a grid or a graph, um, shortest path, lowest cost, that I'm going to be using those terms uh, interchangeably here. So let's take a small subsection of this graph. How about the top left three by three? All right, I'm just going to copy it down here. We've got a one, one, six, a one, three, eight, and a two, one, three. We want to find our way to the six, starting from the top left one. And in this small grid, we don't have to use Dijkstra's, but I'm just using this to illustrate the algorithm. Essentially, what we do is we are going to keep a heap, actually a priority queue. And if you don't know what that is, it's okay. It's basically a data structure like a stack or a queue, except the first item you pop out is going to have the lowest value um, always. And we can do this in efficient time complexity, O log N, if you know what that is. So that's why we're going to use a priority queue. So the idea is we're going to keep track of an array that tracks the lowest possible cost it takes to get to each point. And it starts out full of zeros because it's not been initialized yet. So the first point we're going to explore is this point right here. And this is going to be point uh, one, zero, zero, right? So zero, zero, we push that into the heap. The cost of getting there is zero. So this is the first element in the heap. Then we iterate, we iterate through the entire heap. Um, and when, so like here, yeah, we got the cost and we got the coordinates. The idea is that we take the first possible coordinate to get to that has the lowest cost, because this ensures that every, no matter where we go from here, it's going to be the lowest cost, no matter what. So we're going to pop out the lowest cost element from this priority queue using the priority queue in O log n time. Um, popping this out, we get zero, zero with a cost of zero. Um, and from here, we can go to two different places. That is this bit of code over here. We're iterating in four possible directions, ensuring that it's in the grid and uh, looking at those spaces. So going to the right here, this is going to be 
0, 1, because we are indexing by first rows, then columns. 0, 1 is going to have a cost of 1, so we're going to just put that in. So 0, 1 is going to have a cost of 1, and going down to 1, 0 is also going to have a cost of 1. Now, we're done with this point. Um, so this, this first node has been visited. We know that we are never going to come back to this point with a lower cost, because remember, this point was chosen, 0, 0 was chosen because it had the lowest cost possible out of all the points that are available to us. So now these two points are in the um, priority queue, and it doesn't matter which one we pop out first, we might as well pop out one, um, one, zero, 1 first. So looking here, we got two possible places to go, we can go to 3 or we can go to 6. If we go to 3, that's 1, 1 with a cost of 4. If we go to 6, that is 0, 2 with a cost of 7. So we put those four, we, we, we put these two points in, um, and then we mark 0, 1 as visited. We're never going to come back with a lower cost. So this is done now, um, and these two are in. Now, what's the next lowest, co lowest cost? 1, 0 with a cost of 1. We repeat this process. We actually can add on to uh, previous points, so long as we make sure to take the lowest cost as well. Uh, now if we go to 2, 0, we get a cost of 3, and if we go to 1, 1, we get a cost of 4. So we put these two points in, and those are the new points that are now available to us. And now 0, 1 is dead. Oh, I mean, we can't visit it again. When we're keeping track of points that we visited, I'm using a set because it's easy to handle, it's fast. We could use an array uh, of booleans, but uh, I just chose to use a set because it's easy to use sets in Python. So. Um, now we got all these four points, and the next one we would pop out is 2, 0, because it has the lowest cost. And we would just repeat this process. We just keep going until we get to the 6. When we do reach the 6, uh, we just break and find its cost. Because we know that every single step we took to get here, we chose the lowest cost available at all times. So that's the gist of Dijkstra's algorithm. If you think about it a bit, a bit it's really just modified breadth for search, except... Uh, we're always choosing the lowest cost, and that ensures we're finding the shortest path through the grid. Um, so this only works, of course, for grids that actually have weights. If they don't have weights, then you might as well just use breadth for search because the length is going to be equivalent to the cost. But yeah, that doesn't matter. We're using Dijkstra's because it's cool. It's fast. Um, so yeah, link to the Wikipedia page is in the description if you want to expand on my explanation a bit. Hopefully that was clear, uh, but let's go into the code a little bit and just summarize what we just did. Uh, we are keeping track of a priority queue, pretty important data structure if you're going to go into computer science or, I don't know, it's just pretty cool. And, uh, overall in Python, this is implemented in the heap queue library. So we're keeping track of a priority queue, putting in the first point, the starting point, uh, we're keeping track of cost, x, I mean, cost, row, and column. So we just iterate through this entire priority queue. Uh, don't visit points that have already been visited because uh, the for coming back to a point later on, we're guaranteed that this cost is going to be inefficient. Uh, if this point hasn't been visited before, then we mark it as visited. We put in its cost into this array. Sorry, I didn't update this array during the uh, looping, but... Basically, the idea is when, when we finish a point, we mark its value in here. So uh, this is not this is the order it would be in, very roughly speaking. Um, something like that. Something like that. And it would keep going. So we update the cost whenever we visit a point, because again, the cost is lowest when we get there. Um, and if we reach the ending point, then we want to break because we're done. We've already found the best path there. Then we just go through all the neighbors of the points and add it on to the end of the priority queue. So that is Dijkstra's algorithm in a nutshell. Hopefully that was clear again. And yeah, that's pretty much it for part one. We just put the grid into an array, do Dijkstra's on it, and find the shortest path. Well, actually, we don't find the shortest path. We only find the shortest cost, but we only have to find the shortest cost. All right, now for part two. The grid is actually a lot larger than we suspected. So for part one, I actually thought about doing breadth for search, but then I realized, first of all, it wasn't it wouldn't be fast enough, and second, it um, is probably necessary for part two. 
So the grid is a lot bigger than we thought, and it is procedurally generated given our starting grid as a sort of tile. And our tile is duplicated to the right and down. Every time it goes to the right or goes down, everything in the grid goes up by one, but nines loop back to ones. So in this example, eight, nine, one, two, three, the next row would be, sorry, sorry. If the example is eight, that's the entire grid, then uh, extrapolating it down kind of looks like this. So if we're starting out with a 100 by 100 grid, we have to duplicate this 25 times, and that is 500 by 500, which is absolutely massive. So obviously we're gonna have to use an efficient algorithm. Um, the only thing we have to do here differently is modify how we actually compute the cost, I mean, sorry, the risk level for any given point. And how we do that might be a bit challenging. We have to use a little bit of math here, but um, this is what it does. Let me explain it. So we can imagine this as sort of chunks um, of duplicated tiles. So we have a bunch of chunks. I'm not gonna drive the, draw the full five by five, just a three by three right here. Uh, we can index these chunks by row and column. This is gonna be chunk zero, chunk one, and chunk two, zero, one, two, similarly for the columns. Now, when we're given a row number, for example, this goes from one to four, this goes from five to nine, and this goes from 10 to 14. Given a row number, we wanna find which chunk it is in. And to do that, we can simply take, first of all, the mod, uh, mod five in this case, cause it's a small grid. Um, our original map is gonna be 100 by 100 instead of five by five, but we're just gonna do five by five for now. Given a number like seven, we do seven mod five, so that, that's gonna be two, and then we add on however many multiples of five are below it. So seven divided by five, taking the floor, equals two plus one, which is three. No, wait, something went wrong here. So yeah, I'm getting myself confused here. If we're looking at the point with row number seven, that's gonna be in the middle of this chunk over here. So that is going to correspond, it's just gonna be this middle chunk uh, this middle row duplicated. So all of these numbers are gonna get passed down below, but we do have to add on um, the chunk number to uh, increase for the number of ones and uh, that are added on for every time we move to the right and down. So we have to actually add on one because it's in the first chunk down. Similarly for the columns, um, zero through 14, we do the same process, taking the mod to get the corresponding original location in the original map tile, and then adding on the column number to account for the number of ones, um, the number of times it has been incremented by one. Uh, but now we have to note that zeros, uh, I mean, sorry, nines wrap around to ones. So here's how we can do that. Nines wrap around to ones, right? So nine should go to one, 10 should go to two, 11 should go to three, and so on. And you should notice a pattern here. What we can do here is just take mod nine. So we can do x mod nine, sorry, x minus one mod nine plus one. And we need to do this little minus one plus one shenanigans because there's some like edge cases. So like, for example, nine, 10, um, 10 has to go to one, not zero. So, I mean, nine cannot go to zero, nine has to stay at nine. So there's some weird off by one stuff here. You mess around, you get this. So yeah, this, this first part computing just the corresponding location in the original map and adding on how many times we move to the right and down to get the number of times we increase by one. And then we wrap that around. So nines wrap around to ones, tens to twos and so on using this formula. And then after we have this efficient way to get a given number, a given risk level for any coordinate in the grid, we can simply use Dijkstra's algorithm again, except this time instead of simply adding on the risk level for any point to compute its cost to get there, we add on the map, I mean, the risk level again, except computing computed using this new function because we need it. So yeah, part two just extends on part one a bit by adding on another layer of computing map risk levels given coordinates for a given larger procedurally generated map. So yeah, that's it for part 15 day 15 of Advent of Code 2021. Link to Dijkstra's algorithm Wikipedia page will be linked to in the description as well as my code. So hopefully you found today helpful. Hopefully these explanations were clear. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave it in the comments below. 
I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow in Day 16.